Welcome mindsetters. Guys, we're here for another cool session <laughs> of life science. Exciting, amazing, awesome, world shattering life sciences. Was it? It's, it's, it's my job to hype up the show. It's make sure that these guys have fun and stay tuned with us the entire thing so they can learn. I only, I only give him a hard time. I, it's just to make him get all like the, 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 the I love it. But yeah, we're going to try and make this as exciting as possible. We're going to, what, what's it? Edutain. Edutain, exactly. There we are. That's so we're awesome. educating while you're being entertained, entertained. and you've got gorgeous standing here and you've got old me teaching you there. No, awesome and standing here. A bit of luck. <laughs> It just in the head and you sort it. Okay. Mm -hmm. What we're doing today, by the way, Ty, please, please tell with me. the grade 11s, we've got revision scheduled for the next two or three weeks. And I just thought you guys are heading towards exams. I know that a lot of learners, especially from the queries we got on Facebook, were a bit worried about the whole circulation in the heart and how the heart works and blah, 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 because it's a very complex section of work with a lot of information um, and sure, it's a lot of learning to do for the, the amount of marks that you could or would get for that section of work. So I think we're going to go through the, the heart and the, the pounding of the heart and the, uh, nothing to do with Valentine, nothing to do with being in love. No, Just no. the pure physical issues around the oh, heart. Awesome. And, and as Ty and I've already told you, that if somebody says to you, I love you with all my heart, not worth it. But if they say, I love you with all my hypothalamus, uh -huh. it's about the hypothalamus. then that person really loves you. The heart just pumps blood. I mean, hello. How important is that? Exactly. So <laughs> while <laughs> Kathy heads over there, guys, make sure, make sure you know the drill. You get on the page, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Get chatting to me so I can get those questions to Kathy. If you're lost anywhere, if you need help, guys, post, post, post. And as I always say, pens, pads out and make notes. Make notes, make notes, make notes, because making notes is the smart way to pass exams. But anyway, moving on. Kathy, take it away. Okay, guys and girls, here we go all about the heart. We're going to talk about matters of the heart, except these matters of the heart is the physiology of the heart and how it works and why it is important to our existence. Okay, first things first. Every cell that is living, not dead, living, needs two main things. It needs nutrients in the form of glucose and it needs oxygen. Why does it need nutrients and oxygen? Because the cells will take the nutrients and they take the oxygen and they go and the mitochondria goes vur, 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 and what are we going to have during cellular respiration? We end up with ATP Okay and a whole bunch of carbon dioxide and water is released from the nutrients and the oxygen. And that happens in the mitochondria. E All right, why? We need that energy. We need the energy for everything to survive and work. So, all cells require nutrients and oxygen to survive and the cells are going to produce metabolic waste, all right? Not ATP. ATP is good, okay? Our metabolic waste is going to be carbon dioxide, and it's going to be urea and uric acid and creatinine and blah, 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 a whole bunch of stuff that the cells are going to produce during this whole metabolic process. Remember... Metabolism is made of all the anabolic building and catabolic breaking down processes that, we, that take place in our body. All right, so living cells, nutrients and oxygen, and then the wastes need to be taken out and away from the body. So how do we do this? We need circulation to take place. So this circulation, and why is this not going? Oh, there we go. Okay. Unicellular organisms, in other words, they're only one cell. I mean, they don't have like special processes. It's simply diffusion. All right, so it'll go from a higher concentration along the concentration gradient to a lower concentration until an equilibrium is reached, and that's it, end of story. It's the same way we sweat. 
bright, just pure, plain diffusion. That's what happens. In the cell membrane, out the cell membrane. Everyone's happy. When we look at cylenterates, okay, they have a gastrovascular cavity. So you've got something that looks like a muba, and it's got one opening here, and the opening goes into this cavity. So having that one opening, we call it a cele they are, belongs to the cylenterates, and it has a gastro vascular cavity. Now you look at that when they go, what? Gastro? Uh, what do you have when you have gastro? Time. If I say to you, so-and-so has got gastro, what do you understand? It has to do with your intestinal tract? Yeah, it's got to do with your tummy. And if I say someone's got gastro, it means that they've got a runny tummy. So it would be that they, they've got um, diarrhea. Okay, that would be what we would term, in layman's terms, gastro. So gastro has to do with the digestive tract. Okay, vascular means cavity. Uh, vascular means a, a, a cavity which is lined with vessels. Cavity. So there's your gastrovascular cavity, your cylenterates. Only one opening. Then we look at sulamates. And if you were watching the grade 10 program just now, a sulam is a cavity on the inside of an organism that is an invertebrate, and it help, it's an endoskeleton. So you've got the sulam becomes the endoskeleton. Now, in your sulamates, which would be, for example, an earthworm, they would be sulamates. They would have an endoskeleton. Okay, um, they have a vascular system and a simple heart structure. So they've got their little digestive cavity, all right, or this, 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 this digestive tract system, because we know, what do we have? When we see earthworms around, they eat soil as they burrow into the ground, and they poop the soil out on the other end. So you have all these little round bullikies of, of, of sand on the surface. And that sand has passed through their... Tr so they've got what we call a through gut. Not like your cylenterates that only have one opening. And they have an opening into this gastrovascular cavity. Your sulamates have a... Th uh, let me just write here a... through gut. So it goes all the way through, and they have to absorb the nutrients. The nutrients get absorbed, and your little simple heart structure pumps the blood around the body. And if you look at an earthworm, you get a nice fat one, you look at it, you'll actually see there's, a, there's like a red line that runs from the tip of its so-called head structure all the way through to its tail or, or anus, that's the, the second last... Uh, um, segment, all right, and you'll see this red line, and that is the dorsal vessel that runs all the way along. All right, arthropods, which are your insects, your sort of like um, locusty type, or your insects, three-legged guys, and your mollusks, which are your slugs and your, and your snails, they have a hemocell. Now look at this. The hemo, we've got hemoglobin in our body. The hemoglobin is on our red blood cells. Hemocell means literally blood cavity. And this hemocell or blood cavity is filled with blood that bathes the major organs. So you've got these organs sitting in this cavity and this fluid sort of is all around the organs. So the organs are be getting their nutrients and their oxygen and they are able to release all the wastes into this hemocell um, structure. And then you've got your vertebrates. We have spinal cords and, and, and uh, um, a spine of bone. All right. Your vertebrates are complex circulatory systems with blood and blood vessels and a heart and a pump to pump that blood all around the body. Here, remember, we have what's called a closed blood system. How is it closed? It's closed within the 
blood vessels. So the blood vessels is what makes it a closed blood system. Where if we look at the arthropods, they have this hemocell or this cavity with that, that sort of bathes the organs. That would be classified here as an open blood system. Right, so those are your basics that you need to know. You need to know the differences. This um, I know was put on um, Facebook for you, this comparison versus an open system versus a closed system. All right, um, I suggest you either go find it or go to um, Thai. It is Learn Extra. Is it Learn when, when you go to the website? Yes, it's www.learnextra.co.za. Okay, well, that's easy, guys. www.learnextra.co.za. And if you go on there, click on, on Grade 11 Life Sciences and look at the smart notes and you'll be able to find this comparison. You know what? Read through it a couple of times and you'll know what it is. Just remember, whenever you do a comparison, you compare apples with apples and pears with pears. So here, we look at where is it mostly found. It's mostly found here, and it's mostly found there. So you're comparing the same thing. Here, blood pumps into the aorta, blah, 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 and you look at what the difference is each time. But here it's under low pressure, there it's under greater pressure. So you need to make sure that you're comparing the same things each time. Okay. Human circulation, we have what's called a closed blood system, and we also have what's called a double circulatory system, which means that the blood passes, for every cycle, the blood will pass through the heart twice. So double means two. So two and twice and double and twice. So twice, double, double circulation. And I'll explain to you why now. Oh, well, I've got it here. Okay, so it's closed. Why? It's in blood vessels. Okay, that's first, that's very important. Secondly, we have double circulation. The first circulation process, or the first cycle, is pulmonary circulation, and the next one is systemic circulation. Pulmonary circulation is blood from the heart, okay, and that then goes to the lungs and then it goes back to the heart, all right? And here, systemic circulation, we are going, the blood goes from the heart to all the parts of the body. In other words, all the systems. That's why it's called systemic, because it goes to all the systems. Now you're thinking, hold on, but th this, is, this is just very complicated. Actually not. Let me show you here. Okay, we have the lungs. Okay, and I'm doing very, very simple, stupid diagrams here, but I need for you to understand this. Okay, let's just move this up a little bit. Here we go. Those are our lungs. Okay, and if we look at anything, when you look at a diagram, the diagram's lying in front of you. If I was shaking, Ty, just come here. If I look at Ty, okay, here's Ty. And I look at Ty, this is his right side, and this is his left side. So if I want to shake hands, our right hands are shaking now. You see they're opposite? Now when you look at diagrams, your diagram is always as if the person is lying in front of you. So that would be his right arm, that's his left arm. That would be his right lung, opposite mine, and that would be his left lung. Okay, so whenever you look at a diagram, imagine you're looking at a person lying in front of you, and then the right side is this side, and the left side is that side. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, darling. Pleasure. It's such a nice model <laughs> that I have. All right. So your lungs, so in this case, this would be your right lung, and this would be your left lung. That's just, it's not really relevant to what I'm trying to show you here. All right. And here we have the heart. Okay. Now, I'm sure you can all see that this is the heart. So here we go. So right. 
What do we mean by this double circulation? The first circulatory system, we're going to do this. I'm going to use yellow. Okay. This blood has to come from the heart, right? It's going to come into the heart. This will be from above, and this will be from below. Okay? So this is everything that is below the heart will come in via this blood vessel. And everything from above the heart, so if we look here, it would be everything from, because your, your heart, if I take my right hand and I do this, that's about where your heart sits. Okay? So, um, you know when people say, generally when they, do, when they swear that they, they really, they swear on their heart and soul, they do this. The reason we do this is because we're putting our hand on our heart. So this is about where your heart sits, okay? Um, and it's on which side? It's on your left. It's slightly to the left of your center bone. So everything that's from above will be from the arms and from the head. So that comes in from above. This comes in from below. This blood goes into, the heart's divided into four parts. So it goes into the top. It goes down to the bottom, and from here, it will go to the lungs. Okay? Now, the lungs, is go lungs are going to, let's go with green. The lungs are going to take the carbon dioxide and the rubbish out, and the blood's going to come here. into that side of the heart, this good blood is going to go from here and then out to all systems and organs. And I'll enlarge that just now. So this basically is the process. So we say, right, hang on, let's get some facts here. This blood that's coming from the bottom is going to be carrying carbon dioxide or deoxygenated blood. This is my little symbol for deoxygenated blood. And it's going to have nutrients because, remember, all the nutrients that had been absorbed by the digestive system. Because the digestive system, the blood goes to the digestive system, and as the, as the uh, um, food we've eaten is being digested, so those nutrients are being absorbed into the bloodstream. And where does that blood go? Well, it's on its way back to the heart. So it's going to be coming zips, back to the heart here. So we've got our nutrients. And remember, from each organ, we are also going to have wastes. Right, because this is blood that's gone through the organs. It's now on its way back to the heart. So it is deoxygenated. Okay, that's what that signs for. Okay. It, so there's now very little oxygen. It's got, or less than it had. It's got nutrients. It's got wastes. It's got carbon dioxide. Okay. And remember, what makes up most of blood? It's plasma. And 90% of plasma is water. When we take carbon dioxide and we add water to it, it gives us a substance called carbonic acid. And carbonic acid is not good. Carbonic acid will burn a little hole in your hand. Carbonic acid is as potent as hydrochloric acid. It is not a very nice substance, but it helps us to breathe at tissue level. But that's a different story. So we've got all this stuff here that has to go to the heart. But coming from the top here, from above, we are still going to have our deoxygenated blood. And we are going to have some nutrients so all the nutrients that weren't used in the areas above, and we're going to have wastes. Now, all of that is in this blood. And it goes whooshing here. It goes into the top part of the heart, the top section. Remember, I said we divided into four halves. It goes into, let's say, segment one. 
and the blood will then go down to segment two. And from two, what's the main thing? We want to take the carbon dioxide out and we want to put oxygen in because that's the job of these lungs. So the lungs are going to say, cool, hold on. We're going to remove the carbon dioxide okay, and some water because we all know that what do we breathe out? We breathe out. <sighs> if I breathe on a piece of glass what, or a mirror, it mists up. We breathe out carbon dioxide, but we also breathe out water vapor. Right, so that has to come out, and that's going to go out. So that we're going to exhale. So we remove the carbon dioxide, and the water which the carbon dioxide is mixed with is going to dissolve, diffuse into the lungs. And that's cool. So that happens in both our lungs. That's what the lungs do. But what the lungs also do is what we are dealing with in the green. And the lungs are going to say, okay, but we are now going to add, we've taken that, out and we are going to add oxygen. All right, that is what the lungs do. So this blood going here is going to have oxygen. But this blood, has it been cleaned in any way here? Can you see, um, can you see any kidneys here in this part here? No. Can you see um, a liver here? No. So, guess what? This blood has oxygen that's coming back from the lungs. It has oxygen, plus it has nutrients, because no nutrients have been lost anywhere here between the heart and the lungs, and it has wastes. Because nothing's been removed, only the carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide has come out, oxygen has been put back in, and this blood is identical to this blood. The only difference is this blood here is deoxygenated and has lots of carbon dioxide, and this blood has oxygen in it. That's it. Now, okay, well that's, you see here, in the heart to the lungs, from the lungs to the heart, there's one set of circulation. That's called pulmonary circulation because the blood vessels taking blood from the heart to the lungs and from the lungs back to the heart. That's your pulmonary system. Okay? Now, the way we name blood vessels is if it is leaving the heart, it's called an artery. Think of the heart away from the heart. Away starts with an A. Artery starts with an A. So away from the heart is always an artery. To the heart is always a vein. So you have the pulmonary artery is moving away from the heart, but it's carrying deoxygenated blood. And the pulmonary a vein is entering the heart, but it's carrying oxygenated blood. And that is why it's very you must never, ever think that an artery only carries oxygenated blood and a vein only carries carbon dioxide or deoxygenated blood. And over to you, Dolph. Okay, so guys, make sure you took note of that. The pulmonary system, make sure, no, heart, lungs, everything, no. So, but now, I need you guys to take a little bit of a break. Doesn't mean you have to switch off your minds. Keep your heads going, because we'll be right back after this. Welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you had a nice little break. I hope you guys had a little bit of a snack. Whatever you needed to stop you from getting up and going anywhere so you can pay attention because this is a very important section. It is revision, which is always a helpful. And guys, guys, keep posting on the page. Let me know if you're lost anywhere so I can get those questions to Kathy. But for now, Kathy, we're good to go? Cool. Okay, people, so now we've done pulmonary circulation. Remember, the pulmonary arteries... If it is moving away from the heart, it's an artery. If it's going in, if it's on its way back to the artery, uh, I mean back to the heart, then it's a vein. So the veins come in, the arteries go out. So this here would be an artery. And this going up here would be an artery. 
These guys are coming back to the heart, so it would be a vein. And these guys coming in here, they would all be veins. All right. And that's how the, the naming goes. So when people turn around and say, or teachers or anyone says to you, okay, the aorta is an artery and the superior and inferior vena covers the veins, what other vessels in the body carry oxygen but are the opposite way around? And I can have a little frothy and I hope you do too. So excuse me, there's no opposite, okay? All arteries do not carry oxygenated blood. All veins do not carry deoxygenated blood. At the end of the day, it's whether it is exiting or moving away from the heart or entering the heart. So, your pulmonary, this would be your pulmonary artery, is carrying deoxygenated blood to the lungs. So, the lungs can do their job. And your pulmonary vein is bringing oxygenated blood back to the heart so that the heart can pump this blood to the second process of circulation. And that second process of circulation is going to be like this. We're going to have the, the stomach. And we have the um, small intestine. And we can have the liver and we have kidneys, and, and, and kidneys, okay, man, I'm sort of put kid, okay, your kidneys are there, all right, just as your legs, we can do all the organs, I'm doing it simply, okay, now, this blood here is good blood, why? It's bringing oxygen, it's bringing nutrients, and it's bringing wastes, which is what the kidneys are supposed to remove. So it says, and to the liver. So it says, okay, cool. What are we going to do? The aorta, which is your main artery, is now going to say, okay, well, hang on. I need to bring blood into the stomach. I need to bring blood into the heart. Ah, now there's one. There's a catch, because... That would be the coronary, coronary is to do with the heart, coronary artery. Why? It is taking oxygenated blood away from the heart and to the heart tissue. Because remember, the heart works with blood. That's its day job. And it's night job for that matter. It's its 24-7 job. But, but remember, the heart muscle needs energy to do its job, to pump everything around the body. If it doesn't have energy, it dies. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to supply the heart tissue themselves with oxygen and nutrients. It's like um, a butcher. A butcher works with meat all day. That doesn't mean because the butcher works with meat all day that he or she just, the food just goes into their body. They have to take their breakfast and they have to eat lunch and they have to eat supper and they'll have a piece of, of carrot cake and tea for tea time, okay? Um, but because they're working with food all day, doesn't mean that they automatically get it in their bodies. They actually have to stop and eat to sustain their body so they can do their jobs. And the liver is the same, the heart is the same, and the lungs are the same. They work with blood, all right? That's their job. But at, by the same token, the organ itself needs its own blood supply, just like every other organ in the body does. The kidneys are different. The kidneys are like a chef because they taste and they taste and they taste while they're cooking. So while they're busy working, they're busy eating on the job. All right, so they're slightly different. But the process here is the heart needs blood. So that's your coronary artery. Now, the blood will go to the stomach. Anything to do with the stomach is gastric. And then the small intestine is mesentric. And the kidneys, renal. So these will all be the arteries. And the arteries will break up into arterioles. And the arterioles will break up into capillary networks. And the capillary networks will start to join up Okay, and as they join up, they join up into venules and then veins. And we'll have the gastric vein and the mesentric vein and the renal vein. Okay, now the renal vein will carry on cruising around here. 
And everything that comes from your digestive system, from your small intestine, from your large intestine, um, and all those structures, man, I'm a silly billy here, hold on. There's my liver. From all the, the structures that have absorbed nutrients, all that blood is now going to come and, and join and enter the liver. Why? This is the, liver, the blood that the liver is going to work with. So this is the liver's job. Okay? It's the job. And part of that job, this blood is going to have lots and lots of nutrients. But the liver has to work with that. And you can't even see that I wrote job here. This is the blood the liver works with. And that blood is going to come in via the hepatic portal vein. Vein, because it's on its way back to the heart. Portal means that there are two sets of capillaries. Okay? Where? The one will be in the stomach and the small intestine and the large intestine and, and the pancreas and heaven knows what else. And all of that flows into the liver. And here it's going to go from the vein into capillaries uh, or venules, uh, into capillaries, back into venules, and then out here, back to the heart. But what we also, oh, hang on, I must put this all in yellow. Okay, maybe that would be a good idea because it's all deoxygenated. I'm really doing well here. Um, okay, so the blood's coming from here, and that will join here. And that's your hepatic portal vein. All right, going into the liver, this is the liver's work. It's what it's going to be working with. The blood coming from the kidneys here, and the legs, and heaven knows what else, all of those are joining up here, and they cruise. Sorry, they come up here. Now, the blood coming out of the liver... The blood coming out of the liver here, right, and this blood here all joins up and it forms the inferior vena cavae. Vena, vein, cavae is sort of, vena cava means main vein. Inferior is always below. Superior is always above. Those are the words we use to indicate above and below. You have the same in a flower's ovary. Right. Um, and, and what sits above the receptacle and what's below the receptacle? Is it res superior above or below, which is inferior? So here, inferior main vein. That's what super inferior vena cava means. The vein that comes from the bottom. Something else here is that the liver, remember, is busy working with the blood from the digestive system, but it also needs its own blood supply. So the aorta is going to supply it with blood, and this will be your hepatic artery. So that is when we talk about the hepatic portal system, this is exactly what I've explained here in doing the systemic process. So, the blood from the artery carrying oxygenated blood, but it also contains nutrients, which it's going to take to all the structures within the systems. Plus, it has some wastes. Okay, now wastes are always in our blood. So, that blood's going to leave the heart via an artery called the aorta. That's the main artery. That aorta is now going to carry the blood via systemic circulation. So this is circulation of blood to all the organs and parts of the body. All right? And the aorta is also going to split, and that's going to go to everything that's above the heart. The heart itself needs a blood supply. Why? Like a butcher who works with meat all day, he still needs to eat his food. All right? He still needs to eat breakfast, lunch, and supper. Um, so they work with blood but they need their own blood supply. So in the lungs, the blood that the lungs work with 
is always termed pulmonary. So pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein is the blood that the, that the lungs work with. But the lungs themselves need, I'm going to use purple, um, the lungs themselves need blood. And the blood going to the lungs to the lungs is called the bronchial system. So you'll have the bronchial artery and the bronchial veins. Right, so, and the, the heart, everything going to the heart. We have the inferior venae cavae coming from below the heart, all the organs below the heart. And we have over here, coming from above the heart, the superior venae cavae. And the superior also brings blood. Now, both those vessels and from the heart, you, uh, from the, um, the, the liver, you've got the hepatic portal system, is the blood that's coming from the digestive system. And this is full of nutrients, okay? That's coming into the liver. The liver's own blood supply via the hepatic arteries coming in. And then you've got exiting the liver is the hepatic vein. Why is it a vein? Because it's on its way back to the heart. All right, now, vena inferior superior vena cavae, blood into the heart. Okay? Now systemic circulation is complete. Now, to the lungs, we put oxygen in via the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary vein comes back into the heart, because remember, anything that enters the heart is a vein. This is all oxygenated. It goes, whoops, and it goes out via the aorta. The aorta will pump blood to the, to the upper part of the heart, uh, body, as well as the heart itself, and to the entire system and all the organs in the body. All right? They do their thing. They take oxygen out. They put carbon dioxide in. They put wastes in. They take nutrients out. And we end up with this blood circulating around our system all the time. Something that's also very important to remember is that blood takes a while to pump around our body, um, the same as oxygen. If I take a breath now, the air I breathe out has, isn't the carbon dioxide from the oxygen I've just inhaled. All right, that, 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 it takes two to three minutes. Sometimes if you're breathing slowly and you're not exercising, up to four minutes. That's why we can go without oxygen completely for four to five minutes before we start suffering from brain death. Okay, so that, that's number one. It takes about three to four minutes for the carbon dioxide from the oxygen you've inhaled for that carbon dioxide to be exhaled and brought to the lungs. Okay, so that, that's something you need to understand. Also, all your blood has different levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide and nutrients and wastes at all times. Okay, so you have waste in, the, the only difference in your blood is does it have more oxygen or does it have less oxygen and more carbon dioxide? So is it oxygenated? Is it deoxygenated? That's the only difference. And oxygen makes hemoglobin, which is part of your red blood cells, it makes the, the color, because it's a pigment. And when it attaches to that oxygen molecule, because it's like an oxygen taxi, when that taxi is full of oxygen, okay, the hemoglobin makes the red blood cells bright red. And that is why you can always tell if you get to an accident and someone has very um, bright red blood wherever they're injured, then you know, oopsie, we have a an artery that, 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 there's, that it's, it's arterial blood. It's got more oxygen in it. Right. Also, it will be pumping because your arteries are under great pressure. Your veins really don't have a lot of pressure. The veins really only have residual pressure from the pressure from the arteries. Okay, so just remember that. Very important. Your venal blood, which, I mean, we've all had blood taken at some other stage for whatever tests or whatever, if you have a look, that blood's always quite a dark maroon. Why? It's got less oxygen. Your veins are close to the surface. Your arteries are all inside the body so they can maintain body temperature. Ty, 
I think it's break time. Yes, it is. So guys, I'm seeing a lot of you having a lot of questions and, and issues, but guys, please, please, please clarify where exactly you're having problems now. Guys, make sure you get in those, like if you, if you lost anywhere, make sure you clarify and say, okay, I don't understand this point, so we can actually go back to it. But for now, guys, we're going to see you after this break, so make sure you keep getting those questions in. Welcome back, Mindsetters. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of you are saying you're having issues and you're a bit lost and, all, and so forth. So guys, we need you to right now really pay, pay close, close attention because Kathy's going to go over it again. So you guys, now, again, make notes, make notes, make notes and try and follow as closely as possible. Kathy, take it away. Okay, I'm going to start again. Right? Lungs. And heart. Okay. Now, rule. Okay, number one. Enters the heart, then it is called a vein. Anything that enters the heart is called a vein. Right? Number two. If it ex or let's, let's put, if it leaves the heart, well, let's put, mm, okay. If it leaves the heart, then it is an artery. And it doesn't matter what it's carrying, whether it's oxygenated or not. If it enters the heart, it's an artery. If it leaves the heart or it moves away, A for away, away from the heart, it's an artery. Okay. So it remains an artery and it then goes to everywhere and when it's on its way back to the heart, it now forms part of the venal system. So it's a vein. That, 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 those are your first two rules. Then, rule number three. Okay. Arteries and veins carry blood. All right? Now, in that blood, we are going to have nutrients and oxygen and carbon dioxide and wastes. All right? All the blood will have that. Blood that comes back to the heart is going to have less oxygen. Blood that exits the heart to go to circulation is going to have more oxygen. But that really is much of a muchness. So all the blood will have nutrients, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and wastes. Okay, rule number four. Okay, is that... We have two cycles which will equal one process. So what do we mean by that? Two cycles equals one process. Why? Because we have pulmonary circulation. Okay? Pulmonary circulation is between the heart and the lungs. So it's this. Okay? So it's just between the heart and the lungs. And the job here is to remove um, CO2 and put in oxygen. Okay, that is the job of pulmonary circulation. And it is between the heart and the lungs only. Pulmonary circulation. Okay, they're all happy so far? I think so. All Everyone's right. following, so. <laughs> then for B, which is the second part of our two, ah, where am I? Which is the second part of our two cycles, because that cycle one is pulmonary circulation, okay?
And then cycle two is systemic circulation. Okay, now the word systemic comes from systems. And those systems that we'll be looking at here, hmm, systemic circulation is between the heart, okay, and all other systems. So it's as this blood comes out of the heart here via the aorta, all right, which is the main artery, as this blood comes out here, it gets pumped to all other systems. So think about your systems. You'll have the excretory system, which will be, for example, the kidneys. And the kidneys are going to take the waste out. Um, you've got the digestive system, so the blood's going to go to the to the digestive system, to the pancreas and the liver and the gallbladder and the the uh, um, large small intestine, the stomach, um, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and it's taking blood to those cells so they can actually do their job. It's taking oxygen and nutrients to the cells. In the meantime, digestion is taking place, so nutrients are being absorbed into the blood. Okay but there is less oxygen in that blood, but there's a whole bunch of nutrients that's just been absorbed. Now that blood all goes through all the different processes and the blood then comes back into the heart. So from the aorta here, that will go to above the heart. So all the systems above the heart, this will go here to um, below the heart, All the systems in the body. And those systems include the heart and the lungs. Okay, now, earlier I spoke to you and I said to you, you've got organs that work with blood. That's their job. All right, let's look at that. So those are our rules so far, and I hope you've got that. Then, let's look at this. We go with um, the organ, and we go with its job, and we go with its blood supply. Okay, where it gets its own blood supply from, and its own nutrients. So, the organ, if we look at the liver, okay, the liver's job the blood, that, the blood it works with comes from the hepatic portal vein. Now, the fact that it's a vein tells you it's already gone through an organ. The organs will be the stomach, the small intestine, the large intestine. Okay? That blood has gone through the organs, and that blood vessel joins up to form the hepatic portal vein. That's what portal means. It's, it's now gone through its process. It's done what it has to. It's picking up nutrients. Okay? The liver now works with this, and you need to know the functions of the liver. It deaminates, and it, it makes bile, and it did blah, 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 uh, um, process. Okay? That's what it does. That's the blood supply for its job. The blood supply for the liver is the hepatic artery. And that artery takes blood and nutrients to the liver so those cells can do their job. Okay. And what leaves the liver is going to then be the hepatic vein. How much time do I have, Ty? I think we've got about a minute. Oh, my gosh. So. Okay. Now, the heart. The heart, my gosh, it's a pump. It pumps blood. It's its job. So its job is going to be... The, uh, um, the, the vessels it's going to work with are the superior venae cavae, the inferior venae cavae, and the aorta. That's the blood it works with. But its own blood supplies the coronary artery and the coronary vein. You follow? So each of the organs, and then we have to add in um, 
the lungs, and I'm running out of time, but the lungs, clearly pulmonary artery and vein they work with, and here the bronchial artery and vein will supply them with, with the nutrients that they need. So it's like a butcher that needs to eat while it works with meat. Time. All right. So guys, I hope, I hope, I hope that helped clear up a lot of stuff. I'm seeing a lot of you saying that you're now following, so which is a good thing. But guys, 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 if you have any problems, keep posting on the page, keep posting, keep posting, and help each other out. But for now, we're going to say see you next time. Bye.